In 2007, we were eagerly awaiting new movies in the Pirates of the Caribbean and Spider-Man franchises. Beyonce and Rihanna topped the charts, and everyone was wrapped up in the drama of the sexy doctors on Grey's Anatomy. So, life today might not seem that different from our lives back then, but 2007 wasn't exactly the same as it is now. A lot of predictions from just 10 years ago ended up being kinda bogus. Observe. The iPhone would fail. With a headline that they'll probably regret for the rest of its days, technology site TechCrunch confidently announced in 2006, we predict the iPhone will bomb. It's a classic Dewey defeats Truman type of headline that will go down as one of the most wrong-headed predictions ever made. Now, TechCrunch wasn't insane. When the iPhone first came out, it seemed ridiculous that a phone would have so many extraneous uses. Sure, checking your email on your phone is great, but what else would anyone want to do on the thing? Conan O'Brien even ran a sketch making fun of the phone's many uses, starring a before-she-was-famous Ellie Kemper. Lip gloss, a condiment dispenser, mace. But why was TechCrunch so sure the iPhone would be a disaster? Well, they thought the glass would crack too much. They figured people would just buy iPods instead, and they found the iPhone virtual keyboard laughable, saying, that virtual keyboard will be about as useful for tapping out emails and text messages as a rotary phone. Don't be surprised if a sizable contingent of iPhone buyers express some remorse at ditching their BlackBerry when they spend an extra hour each day pumping out emails on the road. That did not happen. Cyborg Nation. In 2007, Brian Williams ran a story about predictions for America's future 10 years down the line. Since it was coming from Brian Williams, you knew it had to be true and very trustworthy. It's Brian Williams, America's favorite newsman. He certainly wouldn't exaggerate a story for dramatic effect or outright lie to the American public. Anyway, the segment focused mainly on how technology would change in a decade's time. It predicted that everyone in the country would have a cybernetic implant containing all their personal data. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Other predictions about widespread use of facial recognition technology and invasive marketing techniques were at least a little closer to reality. But so far, Williams is still striking out on those crazy stories in rainbows would destroy music. Radiohead made a bold move with the release of their album In Rainbows. Before selling physical CDs, they'd sell digital downloads and the customer would pay whatever they wanted for the album. For some in the media, this kind of anarchy spelled the end of music as we know it. The Sunday Times declared it the day the music industry died, while The Guardian pronounced it a death knell for up-and-coming artists who would never be able to afford to essentially give their music away for free. Of course, they were wrong. The In Rainbow stunt had almost no impact on the industry, but letting fans play songs for free on YouTube and services like Spotify has become the norm. Ringtones could save music. Music executives freaking out about In Rainbows had one trick up their sleeve. Ringtones. Yes, 10 years ago, ringtones were big business, an embarrassing fact for all of us who bought clocks by Coldplay to let us know when the dermatologist calls to tell us that the new ointment we needed has arrived. Since the music industry was starting to falter from piracy and the move toward digital single sales, ringtone sales gave industry leaders hope of a phone revolution. Madonna even released her song Hung Up as a ringtone before it came out as a single. Luckily for everyone who doesn't want to hear Mambo No. 5 every time they're in a waiting room, iPhones arrived. Remember those from earlier in this video? Suddenly your phone became your music player, and the idea of ringtones saving the music industry went extinct. Thank goodness. Certainly not the worst ringtone I've ever heard. Yeah, that might be the worst. People aren't narcissists. TechCrunch had kind of a rough time in 2007. After declaring the iPhone was doomed, they doubled down on bad predictions by insisting that websites like Facebook and Wikipedia, which rely on user-generated content, were doomed because people are just too lazy to keep posting this crap. Citing the failures of Friendster and MySpace as proof, they reasoned that people would get tired of updating their profiles and return to their real lives instead. Wrong again. TechCrunch obviously didn't realize that for most people, social media is their real life now. And with things like YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram all becoming internet mainstays in the last decade, there's just no telling where this is going to take us over the next 10 years. Hopefully, Brian Williams will be back soon to let us know. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.